Hey everybody, Mrs. Buttershawn here. So today we're gonna to be talking about ionization energy. So exactly what is that? Well, it's the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an isolated atom or molecule. So we're talking about removing electrons from the valence shell, okay? There is a trend for this on the periodic table. It does increase as you go up and it increases as you move to the right. Or you could just draw a diagonal arrow up and to the right. It would mean the same thing, okay? Um, I'm showing you this to show you that it is a true trend. In other words, the, the trend does not work for every single element on the periodic table. However, it does work for the majority. So we can use the trend in most situations, but you can see there's some um, isolated incidents where it doesn't necessarily follow the trend and that's okay. There's an exception to every rule. So you need to know why we have this trend in place, um, the science behind it. So let's talk about as we go across the period on the periodic table, we are adding more electrons to our valence shell. And as we get into the five, six, and seven valence electrons in our outer shell, those atoms are gonna want to hold on to those electrons and accumulate more. They are not going to want to give those electrons away at all. So it's going to take a lot of energy in order to remove one of those electrons that it's trying to hold on to. Therefore, it's going to have a high ionization energy. Now, this also goes for the size of the atom. As we move across in that same direction um, across the period, we are going to have our atoms get smaller and smaller in the atomic radii because they're being pulled in from the nucleus and it's holding on so tight um, to those electrons, it's not going to be easy to take an electron off. Therefore, it's going to have a very high ionization energy. However, if we're going towards the left-hand side of the periodic table over towards the metals now, where we have three, two, and one valence electrons, those are gonna want to turn into cations. So they're gonna want to give away those electrons, those valence electrons, right? So it's gonna have a very low ionization energy because it's gonna be very easy to remove those electrons. Okay, now let's talk about as we go down periods in the periodic table. Um, if you don't remember, we, we refer to it as the snowman because as we go down, it's looking like a snowman being built because we are getting larger and larger with an additional energy level for every period we're moving down, right? Well, as we get to a larger atom, our pool from our protons is not as strong on our outer valence shell because of the distance away and that shielding effect that we talked about. So it's gonna be able to require less energy to lose an electron. Now, if our atom is smaller, like towards the top of the periodic table, okay? It's gonna hold on to those electrons a lot more because it's just closer to it because of the size. It's a lot smaller. All right, so I want you guys to try these out. Go ahead and pause your video and I want you to put these in order from highest to lowest ionization. All right, let me go ahead and show you the answer. So I went ahead and I outlined these and you can see that we have our very highest one being fluorine, and then it goes chlorine, and then we're over here to the other side at sodium, and we're ending with potassium. Let's try another one. Okay, go ahead and try this one out. You're gonna put these in order from highest to lowest ionization, and go ahead and pause your video, and I'll give you the answer in just a second. All right, you ready? Let's go. So I went ahead and I outlined them on the periodic table. Notice that we're starting with the highest, which is fluorine, and then it goes oxygen, chlorine, and then we end up with sulfur. Um, remember, you can draw that arrow to the upper right-hand corner, or you can just follow the up and to the right rule. It's both going to give you the same answer. All right, go ahead and try this one out. On average, which family would have the smallest ionization energy and which family would have the greatest? Go ahead and pause your video. Let's talk about the answer. So our highest ionization energy is going to come from the noble gases. That's because noble gases have a full octet already. They do not need or want to get rid of 
any electrons. They want to keep the electrons they have. So if some atom comes by and it wants to take one of those electrons, it's not going to happen. They're going to hold on to those for dear life and they are not going to let go. It's going to take an incredible amount of energy in order to pull off one of those electrons from a full octet. They have no desire to do that whatsoever. However, the one with the lowest ionization energy is going to be alkali metals. Alkali metals have one valence electron and they want to get rid of it. They want to donate that so they can become a cation, a positive one charge. Um, so it's going to require a very insignificant amount of energy to remove that electron because they already want to give it away. All right. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll see y'all next time. Bye, everybody.